So let me introduce Rebecca Cohen. And Rebecca is on the League of Women, Vo Women Voters Board of Directors. She is a member of the League of Women Voters of Palm Beach County Speaker Bureau. And she is also a member of Temple Judea. And she is here with us today to provide as much information as possible. We're going to try and um, move through quite a bit of information, as you'll see, and also um, try and have some time at the end to take some questions. Rebecca? Thank you, Jason. I am a proud League of Women Voters board member, and I am pleased to be here as a, also a member of Temple Judea. You will notice there is filming going on. And this apparently will be available for those who didn't get here today. There's a lot of information. Did the slide do its thing? Yes. Before I begin, I want to introduce my co-facilitator from the League today, Dorothy Weiss, who is also a member of Temple Judea and with the League for 55 years wow. to tell you a little about the League. Thank you, Rebecca. I don't know if this one is on. Can you hear me? Now, can you hear me? Fine. Usually somebody says, can you see me? But I'm, I'm very tall today. Yes. I'm happy to be here. I am a member of Judea, and the League of Women Voters has been an important part of my life for all those years. And speaking of years, because I want to take a few moments to tell you a little bit about the League. The League is going to be one century old in 2020. It was established in 1920, the year that the women got the vote. And ever since then, it's been a respected and trusted organization in public service. Our mission is to inform the public and then to advocate for positions that we have taken on issues that concern us all. For example, in the national scene, we are very much involved in campaign finance reform and in climate change. And in the state level, in Florida particularly, we are interested in the Everglades and in voter services, and that includes voter registration and access to the polls and fair districts. As a matter of fact, the League has been instrumental in establishing the new senatorial district number 30, when many of us live and work and vote. That Senate district was established as a result of a suit that the League of Women Voters brought against the Florida State Legislature because they failed to comply with what the voters said they should do, and that is to redraw the maps of Florida so that the districts would be fairer. Now, we won that suit, but there are many others pending because the work is not done. And that's one thing that we keep at. And we advocate to the pro appropriate public officials when the issue is important to all of us. And every year at, at election time, we publish the voter's guide, and there are copies today for you, which will cover every aspect of the ballot that Rebecca is going to talk about. And that enables candidates to tell you what they feel and how they stand on issues, and then explain the amendments as well. The League of Women Voters has taken a position on some of the amendments, and that will become clear. So the Palm Beach County League is the largest one in the state of Florida. We have 700 members, and we are always interested in new members. So we have applications for any of you who are interested in joining today. And now Rebecca will cover the ballot for you, and I hope that we inform you properly. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. I'll take that with you. What's on the ballot? As you can see, it's one U.S. Senate seat, House of Representatives, Governor and Cabinet, State Senators, State House of Representatives, 
and local, plus 12 constitutional amendments. You will see that they're numbered to 13. That's because one, number eight, was thrown out, deemed not appropriate. Now, I've learned a lot as I've prepared to talk about this ballot. For instance, I didn't know how many Florida State senators there are. Do you know? 40. How many are in the Florida House of Representatives? 120. And I didn't know, and I do now, how important it is for us to vote what they sometimes call down ballot, because these are the people you can approach to talk about local issues. They're very important too. The amendments we're going to talk about are extremely difficult this year. Yesterday, looking at new material, hoping to be all the better for you today, I found something interesting. It's called the Fleisch Reading Ease Scale, and it evaluates a piece of literature, something to tell you how much education you need to understand it fully. Are you ready for this? To understand these Florida amendments, you need 20 years of United States education system education. 20 years. How did we come up with these? There are five ways that amendments to the Florida Constitution can get on the ballot. There were only three in action this time, so I'll only talk about those. Three are from the Florida legislature, and you're going to see how these amendments have to do with money, taxes. That's what the legislature was focusing on. Two are citizens' initiatives. That means that people got out on the street and in front of Publix or the library or wherever and said to you, will you please sign this petition? And it took a whole lot of petitions. I think it was almost 800,000 signed and confirmed appropriate petitions to get on the ballot. Then the, the final way for these 13 numbered uh, amendments is what's called a constitutional revision commission. And we only hold that every 20 years. Lucky us, this was the year. And I, again, reading up yesterday, the composition of this commission was, it was appointed by Governor Scott. There were, I think the number is 37 members, 33 were appointed by our Republican governor. Amendment, and by the way, I'm going to be completely nonpartisan. <laughs> Sorry. And before we, before we begin on Amendment 1, I want to be sure you have seen that you have a handout on the table. There are pencils, pens there. This is your cheat sheet. You do with it as you wish, but as I go through the amendments, you can think about it today, and you can circle yes or no how you're going to plan to vote. And as many times as I've studied these, I needed my cheat sheet when I went to vote. So everyone has one. If you don't, Dorothy will see that you get one. You're all good? OK. May I ask a question? I know that the League actually has recommended a position. You're going to see what the League has recommended. And we are going to take questions at the end, but thank you for pointing that out. All right, I'm on track. This is number one. And this comes from the Florida legislature because it has to do with taxes. It would increase the property tax homestead exemption to 75,000. It currently stands at 50 on homes that are worth more than 125,000. Uh, if you vote yes, there'll be a loss of tax revenue. What does that mean? That means money for 
fire rescue, for libraries, for all sorts of civic services. And here's to answer your question. Here are the supporting and opposing organizations. Interesting that there are no supporting organizations. And you see the long list that opposes this. The reason the League opposes is that no tax sources or revenue should be specified, limited, exempted, or prohibited in the Constitution. You can pass laws, you can make budget decisions, but if it were a part of the Constitution, there's no flexibility. There's no way that if we have an emergency, a hurricane, some unknown, that we would be able to actually get back some of the monies. Number two, limitations on property tax. That is, the qu could be the questions at the end, but yes. The 50,000 is set, and I don't honestly know whether it's constitution or law, but that is not being tampered with. That will go on, and it, 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 it is an important source of revenue. Okay, are we up to two? Again, from the um, legislature, if this were passed, it will keep a 10% cap and disallow any tax revenue increases. If, if it were passed, it would be the loss of $700 million annually. As things stand now, the cap that's in place is set to expire in January. Oh, sorry about that. Who are the supporting organizations? The realtors. Opposing the League of Women Voters. Now, the same reason I just gave you. The League doesn't believe that any tax strict limitations should be in the Constitution, that the tax stru structure needs to be flexible and that there are needs that people will, will have the ability to judge whether or not there should be taxing in your, on your property that we don't want to be restricted. We don't want to be inflexible. Questions at the end? And please, thank you. If you have a question, mark it on your, your little cheat sheet. All right, number three, voter control of gambling in Florida. This is a citizen's initiative. However, it is a citizen's initiative that was funded by the Seminole Indians and Disney. <laughs> and they put a lot of money into getting those petitions. Uh, if, you, if this is passed, it will mean that the legislature will no longer be in control of where there will be additional gambling. And it does put further casinos in the hands of voters. There's been a fair amount of advertising about this. And by the way, each of these amendments will need 60% of the vote to pass. So it's a pretty high bar. <coughs> Supporting, as you can see, Disney, Seminoles, and the League of Women Voters is supporting this initiative. There's no opposition. Why are they supporting it? Because, bottom line, the League is opposed to gambling. And in this way, gambling is put in the hands of people for a vote rather than in the legislature where... Questions at the end, please? Thank you. I'm glad to see there are questions, and we will definitely handle them. Number four, this is a, an initiative that was genuinely a citizen's initiative. 
voting restoration amendment. Have you all heard about this? Yes. yes. How many people in Florida are kept from voting? 1.6, I heard 1.6, 1.4 million people. And this, these are people who have, yes, had a felony. They've served their entire sentence for that felony. And the, it's often called the second chance amendment. Don't we all believe in second chances? If the felony happened to be murder or a sex crime, there is not forgiveness. This relates to those who have done the restitution and the other categories. And in 2011, Governor Rick Scott issued strict new rules. And since then, there have only been 3,000 of these 1.6 million getting their voting rights restored. Today's Post has a big article about it. I won't go into that. Um, we, we are among only four states in the nation who restrict voting, voting rights restoration. The others, if you want to know them, Iowa, Kentucky, and Virginia. And uh, we've rather become a source of amusement to the country lately. John Oliver, et cetera, on our. Here are the supporting organizations and the opposing organizations. Amendment number five, supermajority required to impose, authorize, or raise state taxes or fees. As you can guess from what I've already said, this comes from the legislature. And this is similar to a provision that was on the ballot in 2012. It was called TABOR. I don't know. Please don't ask me to tell you what that stands for. It was defeated. There's another effort. This would include taxes on sales, gasoline, alcohol, on fees, including for fishing, firearms, and there would be no exceptions allowed. Again, no emergency ability to say, well, we really need those funds. Here are your supporting organizations and opposing. The League of Women Voters, along with opposing this, has given notes that say it further exemplifies the inability of the legislature to pass a reasonable budget. Now, number six through 11, each of these amendments are what they call bundled. And that's bundled within the amendment. There's, they're not bundled together. And these come from the Constitutional Revision Commission. And in some cases, you're going to ask, why in the world are those two pieces together? I can't answer that, except that it came from the, the, the congressional, the committee that kind of wanted us to get them passed. Number six, rights of crime victims judges. This particular amendment is getting a great deal of play with advertisements on TV. And it's a difficult one to explain to you because, of course, we all want victims' rights. The Constitution already covers victims' rights, and the law gives victims' rights. There is a lot of concern about this amendment that if it were to pass, we are going the there will be an abridgment of those who are accused their rights. It will clearly make changes in the amount of time someone has to appeal. It'll go from, <clears throat> from six years to two years in a, a lot of a lot of the crimes. 
also, a lot of the rights that are being discussed are very clearly in place. Oh, I didn't talk about the judges. Sorry. This is a bundled bill. And along with victims' rights, which is all you see on television, it also raises the retirement ages for judges from 70 to 75 years. Now, being an elder, I absolutely love that part of this bill. And I think that you're going to need to decide which parts of a bill are more important to you. This, rate, this increase in retirement age will not affect any currently serving judges. It also will prohibit courts and judges from deferring to state agencies for interpretation. And while this is very, seems unimportant, it probably is important. Who might better know the meaning of something than the agency involved in implementing it? And this takes away their ability. So it's bundled in that way. I could go over some of the rights of victims, but I don't know that we need to. I think you can see here what a vote yes will do. I think that, yes, we are supporting victims' rights, but they are in law. Here's who's supporting. We have sheriffs and Smart Justice, which I don't know exactly who they are. The ACLU of Florida, League of Women Voters, um, are posing for, I believe I could say, the reasons I just gave you, that victims' rights are already supported. I learned something interesting today. Some of the advertisement makes it sound, that for this Amendment 6 that you see on TV, makes it sound as though a, an accused person gets their Miranda rights and the victim gets nothing. That's not true. A victim of a crime gets a same, similar handout, here are your victim's rights. It is already being done. They also get restitution and they are kept in the loop for what's going on. Again, studying this, it, many of the amendments are going to cost money. It'll take more money to, to open up even greater openness or whatever you might call it. And there are, there's no funding stream for that. Number seven, first responder and military member survivor benefits public colleges and universities bundled. <laughs> Creates mandatory death benefits to surviving spouses, first responders, and military members. That's military members who are from Florida or stationed in Florida. Requires supermajority vote to raise, impose college fees, university fees. Supermajority, that's 60%. That's all fees, that's everything in the Constitution. Establishes state college system as a constitutional entity. There is already a constitutional entity for the university system. This is the community colleges which have gone from community college to state college recently in a naming change. Um, here's what your yes will do. It'll create an additional level of constitutional requirements. It expands the definition of first responder. EMTs, paramedics are now going to be part of it. It requires death benefits. I already told you who to military. 
supporting. The colleges want to be in the same category as the universities. Opposing, Florida Education Association and the League of Women Voters. The reasons that the League of Women Voters has opposed this is a super majority for fees or, or taxes, again, makes inflexible, doesn't allow the needs of the university and, and makes it statewide rather than allowing an individual college to make their own decisions. Family members of military already receive benefits from the federal government. And again, and I, maybe this sounds a little political, I apologize. There is absolutely no funding stream suggested for how all of these additional benefits will be supported. One, two, three, four. That's Amendment 8. It's gone. You won't be voting for it. OK, this one is easier to talk about. Amendment number 9 prohibits offshore oil and gas drilling, restricts vaping in enclosed indoor workplaces. Well, OK, they don't go together. But it's easier to understand. You might not need to have a doctoral degree to get it. <laughs> a yes vote will enshrine in the Constitution a ban on offshore oil and gas drilling. And that will signal how important our waters and our environment, how important they are to us in Florida. And I think we, with that message, we will be having as much impact as we can. That restriction for the offshore drilling, by the way, is only within Florida waters, which is, I think I'm correct, three miles offshore. But we can send a signal. Vaping, vaping is like a new version of cigarettes. <laughs> right. And the restrictions are going to be basically what is in place now for smoking. So that, again, it's not that hard. And here are your supporting organizations. A whole bunch. And the opposing organizations, not a surprise. Florida Petroleum Council, Associated Businesses of Florida, at any rate. Our overriding concern here is for the environment and for sending a message. We want to let the world know that we strongly oppose the despoiling of our environment. Number 10, state and local government structure and operation. This is another amendment that it is difficult to wrap your arms around. When this would require the legislature in even years or election years to meet in January. Currently, they meet in March. And I don't think there's any ban on their deciding they want to meet in January, but this will make them do it. Creates an Office of Domestic Security and Counterterrorism. We already have domestic security and counterterrorism under the FDLE, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and this new mandated position will be under the FDLE, but it will have its own existence. Mandates the existence of a State Department of Veteran Affairs. We already have Veterans Affairs. Uh, it's not mandated. I guess someone could decide they don't want to have them, the way it stands now. And next, it forces all counties to elect, never abolish offices. You'll see what they are there. That's the part that I had to learn something about. Do you know 
what our county is. Is it a county that has its own constitution, a grant county or not? You could talk to that as our mayor from Juneau. We have in Palm Beach County our own set of rules, our own constitution. We name these officers and we choose to elect them. We're one of 21 counties around the state who have set up how we will proceed. This will take away that home rule. It won't make much difference to Palm Beach County because we do already elect, but it'll keep us from ever changing that. And it was interesting to me that it's some of the largest counties that are in this category. Broward, Miami-Dade, I think Orlando, uh, whatever, Orange County. Uh, here's what your yes will do and your no. I think we pretty well went over that already. And here are your supporting and opposing organizations. Interesting that the 66 sheriffs who are already elected are supporting this and the tax collectors and the clerk. Uh, the League of Women Voters is opposing. I went to a League of Women Voters luncheon last week and heard our tax collector explaining why. And as so many things, this is a, this is a piece of, this is an amendment that people can differ in whether or not they want to say yes or no. You'll think about it, you'll make your decision. There are opposing and there are supporting. Uh, I think a lot of what they're suggesting we will do with positions such as the Veterans Affairs and the uh, Homeland Security elements, they are there now. Number 11, property rights, removal of obsolete provisions, criminal statutes. This is an easier amendment, frankly. There has been on the books since 1926 a law that non-Americans, foreigners, cannot buy property in our state. Did you know that? I, I have neighbors from foreign countries on my street. It's not enforced, so it's considered obsolete. It was, by the way, the alien land law when it was passed in 1926. It cannot be enforced, and there, there's no real reason to keep it. The provision that forces suspects, criminal suspects, to be prosecuted under the law that was in place when they committed the crime, the little bit more interesting part of this, and it, it, it relates to things I'm, can I editorialize, like pot smoking as a, no, I'm getting a shake of the head no from my colleague. But, okay, all uh, right. W this will see that you're, any criminal person is prosecuted under the laws of our current time. And uh, the ra high speed rail language, that's sort of a non-starter apparently, and I could get into the weeds with you, it came and went and came again, and we have some high-speed rail. It's cleaning up the language. And here's what a vote yes would do. Basically, we're repealing century-old provisions. We're permitting the legislator to apply new sentencing guidelines, allowing for contemporary culture to rule, uh, and it will delete the section on high-speed high rail. Here are your supporting organizations. Certainly. Does that make sense? Under the law, that existed when the crime was committed, not taking into effect what's a law now. Currently, that is the answer. 
Yes. Thank you. Post facto? Post facto. Yes. Okay. And supporting and opposing. There are no opposing. Number 12. Am I on target here? Yep. Okay. We're getting there. Lobbying and abuse of office by public officers. It expands the restrictions on paid lobbying by former public office officers. It expands categories of office that will be banned from lobbying. Creates restrictions on those who are currently serving in public office from lobbying. And prohibits certain abuses of public office, which you don't want every little detail on that. But basically, it's going to expand from two to six years, the time that many officials would have to wait after they leave office before they can start any form of lobbying. And it increases the places where this lobbying ban is in place. It, again, it expands the range of agencies that will have um, lobbying restrictions. Here's what it'll do. A key issue in this is that there's been very little effort to enforce two years that you have to sit out and not lobby in the past. So if we make it six years, what will the enforcement be? And it has been reported that a six-year ban will put Florida at the top of the how long you have to wait to lobby pecking order in the country. But we do need to enforce something. Um, it include, now it would include governor, cabinet officers, uh, state office holders at lots and lots of levels. Supporting organizations. Why is the League of Women Voters not taking a position? Good question. Because it does not discuss, a, address the most important <coughs> issue here, which is money in politics, dark money in politics. And I think I could add, without doing too much, <laughs> the fact that it isn't being enforced at two years. So the League has chosen to take no position. Because quite frankly, how could you, in a way, take a position against strongly trying to have good ethics in government? But Let's enforce what we have. Let's talk about money. And this is our final number 13 amendment, ends dog racing. In the entire nation, there, I believe, and I don't hold me to the fire on this, I believe there are 20 dog tracks in America. 11 or 12 of them are in the state of Florida. And what we've done in Florida has been a little bit nuts, pardon me. We have, one of the reasons we are into dog racing is that we put some paramutual betting in the dog tracks. Uh, if you, and, 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 and this is confusing. On this amendment, you are going, if you choose to stop dog racing in Florida, you are going to vote yes. You are going to vote yes to say no. I, I was at a, at a presentation of these amendments where we had to go over that three times because that doesn't seem right. You're voting yes to say no. And this will happen in December 2020. Here are your supporting. The league's, <clears throat> the league's position is very consistent. The League of Women Voters opposes 
gambling. And obviously the gray 2K USA is looking to support the animals. The Greyhound Association is in charge of the racing. Now, this is not an amendment. This is a Palm Beach County special question. And I have brought you material over there with greater depth about this. This is a levy. They call it the one mill plan. And this is going to fund school safety, school police, <coughs> mental health professionals, fund arts, music, physical education, and teachers. It's going to improve teachers' pay. Well, I got a little additional information on this initiative this past week, and I heard something stunning from the school world. In this year, September 2018, 223 children were Baker Acted from their school. The Baker Act said is what takes a person into mandatory evaluation. There are needs. Our children have mental health needs. Uh, if this doesn't pass, the 0.25 levy will expire in 2019. And this is not a 60% vote. This is a 50 plus 1 percent. And we don't, because it isn't a ballot initiative, it doesn't have a support opposed. Um, I think I'm safe to say the League of Women Voters is supporting this. And wrapping up, no, it's too late to register as a voter. However, if you need to change your address, you can still do that. And I brought forms. We can help you with that. It's not too late, believe it or not, to still do vote by mail, though it's getting close. I think it's next week. And speaking to the supervisor of elections office, they suggested that the technical date's a little dicey. By the way, we have the most amazing, great supervisor of elections staff in this county. We read about things that are happening around the country with voter suppression. They're not happening here at the supervisor of elections office. They could not be more supportive. So here's what you can do. Vote. And here's a site where you can get more information. We'll take questions.